Here we are live from Salem, Massachusetts, back reporting live the geoengineering assault today. Today is, today is Friday, December the 14th, 12-14, originally 10-14. This is, what you see here is nothing but aerosol dispersion for climate modification, geoengineering. And you'll note it's all in the path of the sun here. This is solar radiation management and chemical ice nucleation to confuse, pacify, and divide the population regarding the true state of the collapsing biosphere. Five years, five years, five years, my brain hurts a lot. Five years, that's all we've got. Bad news, we probably have five, maybe six if we're lucky collectively as a web of life. And as, you know, everyone's thing, it's all the people who say it won't be in my lifetime. Bad news, bad news, they're, they're covering it up. That's what this spraying is. The, to, the to temperature today, will reach a high, I think, of 42 here at the ground level. And without this geoengineering, mo weather modification, climate engineering going on, it would probably get up to 60 or 70. They're spraying, aerosol spraying. Remember the up outcry about hair aerosol hairspray during the 80s? And then the 90s too, maybe, I think, I don't know, they were connecting that to uh, ozone destruction, right? The big hole in the ozone layer. Well, look at this, what they're doing. They're aerosol spraying right into the atmosphere. And they've been doing this routinely and intensifying it for a 70 year period. The card of weather modification was played long ago. They're presenting it to you in the mainstream prostitute corporate propaganda outlets known as the media as something they're considering doing to mitigate climate change and global warming. No, they, st they played this card already 70 years ago. The same forces that brought you the atomic bomb and nuclear energy. The same level of consciousness that brought you the industrial revolution, so-called industrial revolution. Which was, that was playing the geoengineering card as well. Because once you, anything affecting, as Dane Wigginton says, ad nauseum on his show, and as I've already said a couple times, anything, or some, I've been ta speaking to this effect, I don't think I've, been ex I've explicitly said it, but anything that affects the energy balance of the biosphere is geoengineering. And humanity, all sorts of anthropogenic, man-generated, activities are killing Terra, Mother Earth, or Gaia. But this latest round of assault here, this aerosol spraying in the sky, is the uh, epitome and the climax, it would seem to me and others, of the uh, assault man has been waging, the war man has been waging against Earth and all of her life and all, so himself this is this this is the insanity of this uh what's going on is that it ultimately is man killing himself and these are people we're dealing with who are ordering this who, who are perched atop the military industrial complex the predator creditors if people if the masses if a critical mass of the masses came to understand that these oligarchs are not untouchable, the whole thing would shift immediately. And we could maybe
turn the tide on this hell on earth agenda that was that was started and the card that was played long ago and that every mall of humanity has been conscripted into and that just tacitly accepts that this is just the way it is to be in a state of perpetual war with all of life or Nakoya Katsi as the Hopi term goes life as war I've been remembering the Rupert Sheldrake talk in which he brings up the very interesting fact the very interesting fact that or the connection I should say between the son of the only begotten son of God story Taurus Torin Shroud and when you come when and the anthropological fact that humanity has been prey most of its uh, his, his development a prey preyed uh, preyed upon by predators of nature humanity has been subject to prey and uh, attack and what is always the case when there's a predator prey relationship there's always the situation where the predator goes for the weak links in the herd and once it gets one the rest of the herd's left alone and you'll even see the herd just kind of sauntering or uh, loitering about the kill because they know they're safe because the predator got one the one that gave its life for the many yeah think about the whole thing this is uh, thinking and see the thing with this kinds of this, like that line of thinking like I just said you know connecting this story myth, symbol, this mythic story that captures humanity its imagination collectively especially with of course this time of year Christ's Mass the birth of baby Jesus consider that whole story of the one giving its life for the sins or the signs of everyone else and the whole thing with the forgiveness and atonement at one meant when and thinking about it and looking at the reason reasons for the story and taking putting it in that context changes the whole thing because the historical context with put match to mythology doesn't cut it and shouldn't for any reasonable human being then this is why you know the Roman slant on the story and what they did in 325 with the Council of Nicaea was it was it a, a travesty and if there was such a character historical character who literally died on a cross for your sins literally well guess what he never would support what the church has done and what the church is the church is Antichrist quite transparently the Inquisition Spanish Inquisition smoking gun on what the church is they allowed this uh, in the, you know the, the whole game they played with allowing the hermeticism to come in and then when it started to actually change people's hearts and people stopped believing in outer authority Would you look at that yeah rainbow clouds yep people stop you know the hermetic infusion into Europe and the renaissance the uh, the church saw it's, it meant it would ultimately mean their end so they had to stop it and they burnt Giordano Bruno at the stake and then hermeticism went underground 